Alright, so your motor doesn't start at all. The first thing that you're going to want to check is uh, the breakers. See if you've got uh, tripped breakers in the system, the supply breaker of course. Um, it could also be a fuse if you've got an older electrical system in your home. So be cautious of that. That's always the first thing that you want to go check uh, because that's the easiest thing to fix. You just uh, flip it back on or replace the fuse if that's what you've got. If that isn't the case and you're not so fortunate to have that go wrong on you, then the next thing you're going to want to do is check the voltage of the system, um, which what you can do is use a voltmeter of sorts. Uh, like I mentioned, in our introductory video, I went out and bought uh, this meter this morning for $18. And I specifically wanted to use an inexpensive meter to just kind of showcase that uh, pretty much anybody has the means to perform these types of tests. So when you're checking the voltage, um, now this system currently right now is energized. And um, when you are checking the voltage, you generally want to work either from the power where it needs to be. So like right here, the, uh, the pressure switch should have good voltage. Now we'll check that really quickly just to kind of show you what that looks like. On this particular meter, I'll set it to uh, the voltage test setting and uh, set this down really quickly right here. And we should be reading, because uh, this is a 240 volt system, we should be reading about 240 volt uh, across the line here. Now you can see, hopefully, uh, we've got about 246 volts or 245 volts. So that is perfectly acceptable. These motors have a plus or minus 10% tolerance. Now let's say you hook your voltage meter up here and you don't have voltage, um, then great, trace it back, keep checking at every potential intersection where you've got uh, splices and so forth and try to determine where that uh, voltage is not getting through and that may be your problem. If the voltage and everything checks out, then, uh, then we wanna also test and see if the voltage is getting through the pressure switch to the other side of the contacts, we would need to have the pump running in order to perform that test. Uh, but what you can do before you go ahead and do that test is just give a quick visual inspection of the pressure switch. Typically, it's going to be pretty apparent in most cases if the, uh, if the pressure switch is uh, deformed, uh, you see some burn spots, uh, something melted in there, or a whole lot of blackness, uh, which is the carbonation of the points as they open and close. There's a little spark that kind of occurs there. Uh, so just be aware of that. And then uh, what you can do is fire the pump up by opening a valve somewhere in the system and checking that voltage, ensuring that it's getting through. And if need be, you may have to continue to check voltage um, all the way to the pump cables, which we have over here. Um, and that voltage can potentially be checked uh, at the box. You wanna ensure that you've got power getting to the box. You wanna ensure that you've got power getting through the pressure switch and, and everything there. And the meter will definitely help you doing that testing. If you do find something wrong with the pressure switch, go ahead and replace it. It's not worth rebuilding, repairing, etc. cetera. Um, so it's under $20, just, just get a new one. Um, but in the event that everything checks out voltage wise, this could be an indication that you've got something wrong in the control panel itself. Now, I'm not gonna open the control panel and go over that in this video. That's gonna be uh, a little bit later on in this video series. So if you stay tuned, you will see the, all the troubleshooting techniques where we actually use the meter to go into that control panel and test each individual component to ensure that it's in operating condition. So as we mentioned uh, with checking your voltage, you may have to kind of branch out from the control box and actually go to where the wiring connections themselves are made. Generally speaking, there's going to be a wiring connection uh, from the pump motor to the submersible pump cable, and then from the submersible pump cable, in most cases, to either a UF direct berry or a THHN, depending on whether you're running conduit or not. Um, so all of those different splice connections you have to be aware of and possibly check those because uh, if a splice is not done properly or uh, something else may have happened, then there could be the uh, splice itself became corroded or uh, became full of water or something along those lines. 
and uh, cause the system to just like trip out or, or cause a short in the system. Go through each and every splice in the system. I obviously recommend checking everything above ground before resorting to pulling the pump and motor because that's usually kind of a last case uh, uh, scenario. You always want to avoid that because of the cost involved and the work involved in most cases. All right, so now you've gone through all of the different checks that we've kind of talked about in the situation where your motor's not starting at all. And if we've gone through all the checks we just discussed, then it might be time to replace the pump and motor. Now, like I mentioned just a second ago, uh, it could be that we've got a bad connection down the well. Unfortunately, we won't know that until we pull it up. Uh, so in that situation, I do have a couple of tests that you can perform on the wiring uh, before resorting to pulling the pump up. Uh, the unfortunate thing about that is in those tests, it's, it's not going to tell you whether it's the wire that's bad or the pump that's bad uh, until you get it up and out of the ground. But at least it gives you a, a pinpoint indicator that it's time to pull the well because we've performed these tests. And those tests we're going to go ahead and perform in this video series uh, right after we do the pump control box testing. Hey, so that's it. So thanks for joining us today on another great video. Don't forget you can find all these products on rcworst.com. Don't forget also to like and subscribe for more content. We'll see you next time.